Mary Kay, and um, it's so nice to see some familiar faces and lots of people who I've never met before. Um, what's cool about coming to things like this is that you know we're in the industry for so long, and um, and in Chicago here, the, the Chicago chapter has not been super active, so we're really trying to you know reinvigorate that. So I've already met women who I didn't even know were in the industry, and um, there's new connections being made and a lot of positive energy, and I think that. You know, if we can all kind of get together and um, and really work to make the organization great here in Chicago, um, it's going to be wonderful. So, um, thank you for coming and uh, enjoy the view. <laughs> 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 How was that? That was pretty cool. That was good. <laughs> okay. So, can you hear us? Well, I know you can hear me, but I think it, you guys should do one, two, three. Do you want to see the mic, or do you, you want to see the mic, or are we good? Use the mic. Use the mic. And they're in the front row, so. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, but then how does that work? Just pass it around. Okay, cool. Okay. So, who went to the taggies? <laughs> we have a couple winners, yes. I'm thinking. So, Dude, who we have a winner like, sandwich? <laughs> you, no, wait. You guys are in the middle of them for the winner sandwich. Well, you're a bread. Am I the bread? Who are you? Winner because that was a couple years ago. Does that count? <laughs> so, I just, so I just need to get off the stage, right? So, Sarah, yes, you won for electronic adaptation. Yes. Taggies, yes. Yeah, and, and here's a funny story. I was the mic. Oh, yes. I was completely shocked because our good friend Brian Torney sitting back there told me the day before that he Wave, was Brian. <laughs> Wave, so that they all know who you are. Wave. Yes. There you go. Did you guys stand? Is that come up here? No. Nope. <laughs> Give me ten. <laughs> so the day before he said, you know, Sarah, I, I saw the results. Just so you know, Leapfrog didn't win anything. So don't worry about preparing anything to say. Did you really? Nice. Right. He implied that. <laughs> so it's like, oh great, I can just sit here and enjoy my dinner. And then all of a sudden they called out Leapfrog. And I was like, I said a bad word. <laughs> Did you? I said a really bad word. Can't say it here. Yeah. Brian's gonna yell. He's our producer. He's gonna yell at us. Yeah, Anna heard me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job then, on the fly. Thank you. It was well, really good. You know, when you do thousands of like sales preview presentations, right. I think it's good training for having to speak on the fly. So. And Debbie. Yes. Um, I won for Rising Star. Rising Star. So for anybody who doesn't know Debbie, this is Debbie Sterling with Goldie Blocks. And uh, you've been getting, uh, some people have been talking about you, right? <laughs> I don't know. You, what did you get? 100,000 new followers There may Facebook? have been a video that went viral this week. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. But I also was very unprepared last night. Did not have a speech planned, and I just started crying. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> did you really? That's <laughs> It's emotional. It was a huge okay. honor. It, well, you know what? It's it's just an amazing concept and much much needed. I mean, um, I have no daughters. Um, four, I've got four sons. Um, but if there's, so if there's one thing I'm very in tune with, it's women. And and because I've always wanted a daughter, so don't ever think that I didn't. I always did, and I tell them that every day. But, <laughs> but but what you've done and what you're doing and, and where I see you going because you are so young and you've got um, passion and energy. I, so good for you. It's good for you. So cheers to you. And uh, and cheers to you, Sarah. And cheers to yes, you cheers, for being nominated. Well, tell me again, what was the? Yeah, I won. <laughs> <laughs> what was it again? Game design excellence. Twenty oh nine. It was not that long ago. You know, we were all adults at the time. We are. We were. Yes. Yes. Just saying. But we don't talk about that. We don't. Talk. Okay. It's yesterday's. It, it is. And then we've got a young lady who traveled how far? How many hours of a plane ride was it for you? I don't remember. I fell asleep. You too. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, this is Anita, and Anita, tell them a little bit about what you do. Uh, so I'm an agent, so I never was awarded uh, for anything because I don't invent. I just represent inventors, and I'm just really awestruck with all the like really amazing inventors that are around here, also women. And um, so, uh, and for what people don't know about you, know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, we're situated in Vienna, in Austria. We work together with. Um, like all the major and smaller German publishers, Eastern European publishers, 
the French East, whatever. So um, we're situated in Europe. We, we like are kind of focused on Europe, but we also work together with with Hasbro. We're a broker for Hasbro. We work with Korean board games. So games business is international right now. So we work like with pretty everyone. And um, what can I say? I mean, I just like saw the first topic mm -hmm. on yeah, our so little list here. So I right, was just thinking, right. what what cool thing could I tell you that um, in terms of awards? And we were just awarded best educational game of the year in Germany. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to drop that. <laughs> That's a great segue because uh, I guess it's a really good question. So what what defines a learning toy? Right. I mean. Um, you, you go into the into the toy store right? and you walk down the aisles and everything says um, this helps nine different piece parts. This is why your child is just going to be brilliant one day if they play this toy. Is it really? Is it really like that? I mean, are all these toys that educational? Do they really do that that much to help teach children? So, to be honest, I think so. Yes. I mean, I see in 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 German speaking countries, I see that there's. Um, trend where there's ups and downs and everything and there's this trend that educational games are not they are not supposed to look like educational games anymore so if you put that badge educational game um, we used to call that the kiss of death mm -hmm. in America like educational if you, if you made right it now. yeah if you made it educational we call it well that's the kiss of death so disguise it some way exactly but what you can put on it is um, this trains this and that skill so don't call it educate. This is educational. Just well, say here's my this question. No, but now games I understand. But let's talk about toys for a second, okay? That's that's where I get so much white noise thrown at me. Okay, it's like the games are cool. I get that. I get that you have to think piece parts, right? But I look at these toys and I think to myself, it's not really that educational, right? I mean, I don't know. I guess. It, so I, I have a perspective on okay. this because <laughs> I develop toys for infants and toddlers and preschools and I have to say you know, I get defensive as somebody from LeapFrog and we we say that we are educational you know entertainment company and uh, you know, my definition of a learning toy is a toy that is designed by learning experts mm -hmm. from conception to through kid testing through you know, manufacturing process I mean, Learning designers should be part of the process every step of the way. And interesting story. A couple of years ago, I was developing a base step item for the frog. It was an infant toy. And of course, it's doing due diligence as a marketer and looking at the competition. Mm -hmm. And every single package did have like nine or ten Absolutely. learning skills on it. Right. So I went to my learning designer and I said, okay, I just wrote the package brief. I'm going to have 11, 11 <laughs> learning skills on my package. <laughs> Because I'm gonna be better. Did you like have to make them up? Like, oh, okay. Like, not even like, just pull it out of your head. Not even because you know what these t these toys do have a lot of, of learning right. development in them. But you know, my learning designer said that's ridiculous. You're not putting 11 teaches skills on your package because you know a nine month old pushing a walker is not going to care about phonic skills. I said, but, but I'm saying A says F, ah, B says book, and just like. That's not gonna be retained. Who cares? Just you know, boil it down to what is critical for that child's you know physical, social, emotional development, whatever it may be at that stage. And let's just say that we're supporting that learning skill. You know, I think that's a much more honest way yeah, to I communicate agree. to mom because moms are savvy. They they understand. Well, they're gonna see a list of it slices, it dices, it da da. You know, you're thinking, come on, you know. Oh, it, it, like I said, it's white noise after a while, but that's interesting. I'm going to put 11 on there. I love that. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. More is not better. Yeah. Um, I'll speak to you from Goldie Blocks because I've been really trying to find out ways to um, develop spatial skill, skills in girls. And um, I've been doing all of this research into spatial skills development, and there are different studies and competing arguments and, and this and that. Um, so. As I've been developing the toy, I've just been trying to have pieces with rotation because if you're rotating something in three dimensions, then my thought was maybe that would help develop spatial skills, but I don't really know. Um, we were testing one of our new toys. Um, we had a prototype testing the other day, and a dad and his daughter were in playing with it, and it was sort of a hinge mechanism and a, a lever. And it was really amazing. We were watching it. She was trying to put it together, and um, she's trying to copy the picture, and in order to get it the way that it needed to be to work, all she had to do was rotate the lever. 
but she didn't understand. So she took the whole thing apart and then rebuilt it again. Wow. Without rotating it. It was just a cool hmm. thing to watch. Like, well, I think it's so insightful. It's like the best test ever, right? To bring the kids in to play with the toy before you put it in the market. Like, yeah. You know, which a lot of companies, unfortunately, don't do. Right? Well, I like to test the directions. I find, exactly. I find testing the rules or the directions is more important than mm -hmm. testing the product. Mm -hmm. Because you see the way that you would, well, first of all, I don't believe that you should always just follow the directions. But, um, you know, we have these ways that we want people to use our, you know, that we intend for people to use our products. And um, we have to make sure that they understand that well. And a lot of times they don't. You know, you think you're really clear when you put, when you put the directions together. But you, how many rules have you written? A lot, like, a lot, and it's really in a, in the, it's many, but you have to really parse your language, yeah. and you have to be really, you have to use really direct terms like must instead of may, or you know, it's really, really clear. interesting because I've noticed it, 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 it when I reread it, and sometimes I'm, I've read some really poorly written rules, and, and, and you're absolutely right. If I'm not told I must do something, I might not do it. Okay, and it's going to affect gameplay. It's going to the game's going to kind of suck. That I'm thinking I should have mustered that because I sh I should have done. That. Okay. I don't know. I really like it. I, to me, it's really an honor when someone changes your rules completely. Because I think once you buy a game or once you buy a toy, it's yours to keep. If you want to, oh, if point. you want to, you know, destroy it or change the rules or add, you know, make it make it for money or add, you know, whatever. You know, it's, I it's, love that. It's really funny how many customer service calls you know come in and. People like complaining about game rules and wanting to clarify game rules. So I think that's right? an interesting point. I remember at Hasbro one time. I used to work at Hasbro, and uh, I went down and visited, you know, the customer call center. And I saw this guy who was like, you know, he was very calm on the phone. He's like, "It's okay, sir. Don't worry. Let me reread these directions to you." Blah blah blah. And he gets off the phone. He's this guy's like sweating. I'm like, "What's going on? What was that?" He said, "I just settled an argument between a husband and wife over a game of Yahtzee." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he wanted to clarify the direction. Yeah, we used to, which is Tracy here. We used to get the answering machine Christmas week. Where are you, Tracy? Uh, when people would buy games, there's we Tracy. Yeah, <laughs> and people would call in and they were drunk and they'd say, "What do you say?" And, and you know, I don't know it's just funny. Oh but they do it. They dispute it and then they're like ready to go to the mat. I'm calling someone. It's like settle arm wrestle for it. Who cares? So here, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. So let's talk. So. so Deb, you know, you've got Goldie Blacks and you are sort of changing the way girls play, right? So when you talk about the way you want to market the toy, you know that you've, we've got this whole sort of shift kind of going on right now, this whole gender marketing, right? Um, how, how do we do that? You know, you walk down the pink aisle, right? And do the girls ever get outside of the pink aisle? And I know we've talked about this before. I mean, there's some brands that are trying to transition. Um, Let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, what are your what are your thoughts on that? I'd love to hear. It. Yeah, I mean, I think about this twenty four seven because um, on the one hand, I do I want girls to start developing different play patterns with their toys, and I want them to use their brains and develop spatial skills, as I was talking about before. Get interested in math and science and building, um, but then. You, you go to the toy store and you see the inundation of pink and the fairies and the tea sets and, and, and girls like these things for the most part. And so I'm constantly towing the line between how can I make this stuff appeal to girls? Like how far to go where I want to incorporate colors and themes that they like but I'm also trying to push the envelope. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's it's really tricky. It's a well, constant so challenge. How, is it really that they really that that's what they love and they don't love anything else, or is it because we've been pushing that down the road? I think we. I think that makes a good point. I think you know? we, I think there's this established way that it is in the industry where we know the girls like pink, we know the boys like, and and it's almost become part of our cultural fabric, although it's manufactured and it's not true. It's just what we've kind of decided that it should be, and so people respond that way. And parents. They're the same way. They, they only, you know, the Happy Meal toys. There's a girl's toy and there's a boy's toy, and it's just sad. But you know what? I, so here's the interesting thing. So I, like I said, I don't have daughters, but I, I love little girls, and I, and I always wanted one. And I always talk to my girls. <laughs> this I, cool. Doesn't that make you sad? <laughs> okay, you two especially. Don't get me sad. Did she tell you what I talked? We had a long conversation, and I said, "Do you know how blessed you are to work with your mother?" I could tell her that last night. So Leslie Scott, her daughter Friday, there's third amazing people. Anyway, uh, I go. I do. But here's my deal. Here's the point. So I talk to my girlfriends, right, and I say to them, um, 
you know, my boys were playing with X, Y, Z toy, whatever, whatever I'm like, oh, my daughter loves to play with that. She loves, like, like women of, who have daughters almost brag on the fact that their daughters like to play with boy toys. With, and, and it's almost like, like a badge of honor, like, oh my God, she loves baseball. Like, you know what I mean? You wouldn't hear that from the other side. And I'm telling you, I hear that time and time again. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, is she just saying that because, like, why is she saying that? But I do think that some women want their daughters to sort of expand, and it's kind of a big deal when they do expand to them. So, so if we made the products readily available to them, what the heck? I mean, they would buy them. They would play them. You know what I mean? I think they would. Well, you've got daughters, don't you? I see? do. Yeah, I, I have a six-year-old daughter, and she's getting Goldie Blacks for Christmas. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, she's getting one because it's pink. And she loves the color pink. She is very into Barbie and all that kind of stuff. And, and so I, I think it is really nice. Like what Lego Friends has done has been a great um, kind of entryway into, you know, with that segment into, into girls. But, you know, I also feel like, I gotta say, as a marketer, I don't feel like it's my responsibility to change culture. Oh my God, don't throw tomatoes oh, at me. No, you didn't. But it's like, just I totally said it because I, and my responsibility is to make the consumer's purchase decision easy. And like, if any one of you were told, okay, you're gonna go to your child's friend's birthday party, you need to buy a gift, go on Amazon.com right now and buy one. The first thing you're gonna filter through is, is it a boy or a girl? That's just what we do, and we've seen this time and time again. So maybe it's really your problem. <laughs> maybe it's not my problem. Um, but I, I just, I'm trying to get the easiest sale and the most efficient sale imaginable. Um, and if people start changing the way they think about, you know, maybe it, it is. What's this kid's interest? Does this kid like engineering? You know, does this kid like a certain kind of property? Then I am totally happy to accommodate that as a marketer. But right now, I don't think that's what my buyers want. All right, but you're looking at it from a marketing yeah, standpoint. Now look at it from a marketer. But no, but now take <laughs> that head off. Now, now, to, now talk to me as a mom of a girl <laughs> who likes to play with toys that are not pink or dolls or, or craft kits or, or uh, spa, whatever. I mean, you know what I mean? Now talk to me from that standpoint. That's what I'm saying. I, I guess I just don't draw a huge distinction. I mean, personally, I don't look at a toy and, and say, oh, this is a, a toy meant for girls, or this is a toy meant for a boy. I have, I have a wonderful um, <laughs> situation of having both a girl and a boy, and so they both get girls' toys and boys' toys, and they play with those things together. We have a you-must-share-your-toys rule in our house, and so both of my kids... They're just so working right now. No, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what would happen if you gave one of your sons like oh, a girl, pink toy? You don't want to go there. With I mean, pink. seriously, what have an easy bake oven? Oh, a pink toy in my house? Yeah, not a lot, right? Dude, for real. And you wouldn't brag about it either. My sons love to play with the same yes. pony. They just love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't until they got into high school that they even and I bought one of my kids like a purple polo or something. I don't need a golf shirt. And she's like, really, my purple? And it wasn't until a girl said. Color looks really good on you. That they're like, yeah, do they have any T-shirts in this color, Mom? You know, they, they, no, no, no. Well, let's talk about that. So now let's transition to marketing, to 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 you know, in terms of gender, right? Okay, so here's a situation. So eight years ago, I would walk out my back door, and uh, it was all the stay-at-home moms and talking about what are we making for dinner tonight, and you know, did you try the new Tide stick? Um, and and I worked right until I had my third son, and it, it, I'll never forget the first time I was out there and I'm listening to this conversation. I'm like, are you kidding me? I am going home, and I said, call my husband. I said, I gotta do this. <laughs> I can't have this conversation with these women. I cannot relate. But then you fall into that, okay? Um, at any rate, so eight years ago, it was all women out there. Three years ago, the shift started changing, and there's a couple men out there. And they're out there with the kids, and, and the women are out making two hundred thousand dollars a year, and the men um, decided to stay home with the kids. And it's now changing because these guys are completely uncomfortable around these women. You could tell, right? Um, and, and so, you, 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 as a marketer, you start thinking about that. Like, how am I going to reach this guy with my marketing message? Right? Am I going to put a female spokesperson out there to talk about it? Now, women, their message will resonate. With men, will it? Um, how am I marketing these products? Where are they getting their marketing from? 
it, then I started thinking, you need to have like Toya's at the bottom of the ticker on ESPN. Okay, <laughs> that's, where, that's where it needs to be because that's the only station that's on in my house. So I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I, if there's a, a cultural shift, more and more men are staying home, right, with the kids. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I can say I don't think it's a cultural shift so much in that regard. I mean, yeah, that's probably going to happen. But I think what you see now is you see the Toys R Us Christmas book, and they're sticking a boy standing by the Easy Bake Oven, and they're showing a girl standing by a skateboard or something. And it's like, is that really going to fix it? I don't know. I think I think as developers, and maybe not, and maybe marketing will follow because. But I think we need to push the envelope in making toys that are appealing to everyone for whatever reason, and we need to sort of forget about all of the stereotypical things that we add to toys to make them fit and in, shoehorn into the spots that we know no, I get the way that, the channels work. But what I'm talking about isn't so much how are we going to make the product appealing across genders. What I'm talking about is you got to hit, hit that parent buyer, right? How are you going to reach the dad who's now making the purchase decisions for the family? Is so the dad really making the purchase oh, decisions? Oh, absolutely they are. Okay. Absolutely they are. And I'm going to tell you, it, and I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. <laughs> I feel really strong. <laughs> I don't know if I'm so, so let me put it this way. Okay. I know my husband is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. But you're past the buying all the toys stage. But we're buying stuff. Yeah, okay. Because you know why? Here's why. And this is what's happening more. Okay? He left his, his job, which how many guys are, are getting laid off, right? They're home, the wife's not working. Now he's going out buying the groceries. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not nice think. And that's what well, I'm trying. Well, here, here's the okay. thing. The fact of the matter is, mass retail is really kind of a hostile environment to dads and I've seen this because I do my store checks every single weekend and the moms are in the aisle like looking at every single product playing with the toys with the children and the dads are like I'm just gonna wait here by the end cap and you know you're gonna go in it's it, it would be for me like going into an auto body shop and like looking around being like, oh yeah I'm gonna buy this car wax this is really interesting Right. So, <laughs> so where, where do you reach that? Where, where is their spot? You know where it is. Where is their spot? Best yeah. buy. Thank you. Home there Depot. You go. Uh, game stop. Mm -hmm. oh, see, a few years ago, my husband. Sports Authority. Yes, Sports okay. Authority. My husband yes. took a, a stint as a stay-at-home dad while I was working, and uh, one day he comes home and. And they come home from Best Buy and they bought the LeapFrog tag reading system. I'm like, where did you find that? He said, we were in Best Buy. And I was looking at my new fake DVD player thing. And, uh, you know, Sophie would, just started playing with this cool gadget. And I'm, I don't even know what it's called. We just took it home because it looked cool. Like, that's that's the answer. We have, we have to find, that's we have to know where sauce, they're right? comfortable. You know what, I think it's... Um, that the picture of this of the dad standing in the aisle, not knowing where to go, and also I, what I think is that a lot of men um, are more scared of buying the wrong product than women are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they need, and I think they need this. They, or they think they need this. Okay, this is for boys. I can't do anything wrong with that. And this is for my girl. I can't do anything wrong with that. So I think um, to get dads or people in general not to buy it so gender specific, we need to give them something else to choose from. So it's not only I choose a girl's or a boy's product, so but I choose a, good point. I choose a, really good point, a music yeah. product, or I choose, uh, I don't know, a sportive product or whatever. So like, give them, help them. And what's the best thing to do that is actually having good retailers who can promote the products which are on the island. Of course, it's not like always possible in the big stores. Um, you don't have that recommending kind of stuff. But uh, if you go to a to a to a game store, a toy store, where there is someone who knows what products they sell, you'll get completely different results. That's true. Uh, I'll speak. So I launched Goldie Blocks on Kickstarter, and we put this video together, kind of talking about what what it was and what we wanted to build. And there were a couple moments in that video that was a daddy daughter relationship that I think really struck a chord with a lot of people. One of them was one of our prototype tests. The girl had figured it out and she screams, Daddy, you gotta come here and see this. Oh, that's cool. And see, then, that's what I'm talking about. And then there was that's another, the and then in the, we also, for the video, um, I got my friend Tim and his daughter Lily, we shot a lot of footage of them just playing it together. And it wasn't staged, like they had never seen it before and they just played it together for the first time and we recorded it. And um, I think it had a really powerful effect on dads and moms as well. Who, yeah. Because I think that dads really do want to connect with their kids, and they can do that through toys. And so 
we put that into our video, not even necessarily, we weren't even really doing it on purpose, but I found that it was really powerful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's actually a good point and an interesting view on that because if, if it's more dads at home, more dads mm -hmm. taking care of the children, and if they want to connect with their daughters as well, I suppose they'd be happy not to have to play dressing up games. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> and, and Anita, that's a, that's a great segue to, to our last topic, and that is how do you bring gameplay to a wider audience? Okay, so what I what I love about what you just said is that um, you've got dads playing games with daughters. Okay, fine. Um, you know, we play games with families. We play games with friends. We play drinking games. Um, we, you know, well, no, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Some not. Some of us do. No. <laughs> no. Um, so the game industry. How about that? Totally taking off. You know, you've got Will Wheaton, you've got, you know, Tabletop, you've got Hollywood Game Night. I mean, it's it's not exploding yet, but I can definitely see a trend. And you've got board game cafes. In fact, I think last week in Manhattan they just announced the first, they well, they touted it as the first board game cafe in Manhattan. Um, but and you can speak to that because you've got them all over, right? I mean, right. And, and so it's interesting. So I, I have the privilege of living in a city where there are, or in, in one part of the city there are three games cafes in 10 minutes walking distance, plus a library for games with several thousand items, and to lend one of them costs you 18 euro cents per game. Wow. So this is like really... Cents, she said. 18 cents. 18 cents. Wow. Okay. So this is uh, an awful place to be, and I think that, um, I remember when the last uh, cafe opened three years ago, the owner, he already owned one of the others, and everybody said, you're just crazy, there are only two games cafes in this area, and you want to open a third one. And he was like, yeah, but it's always crowded, so there are going to be people. We have to like, send them somewhere. And he opened it up, and it worked out pretty well. So you have this one cafe where there are younger people, like 18 to 25. And then you have this second one where there's people from 25 to 40. That's interesting. And so one of the places is just for the younger? It's just, just, just kind of turned out that way. So it right? just it's turned out that way. Huh. It's probably depending on what's on the menu. Right, right, right. And the cool thing about it is there's like the, the waiters, they, they come up to you and they ask you, what do you want to drink, what do you want to eat, and what do you want to play? And a lot of people don't go there to play. They don't even think about it. And they are like, what do you mean what I want to play? <laughs> and so the, the waiters are like kind of trained and they can recommend things so that they know that you are not a skilled player. And they awesome. will recommend you something that. simple. Try and take it. The more often they come, yeah. um, the more sophisticated games they play. So like they really... And what I, and you had mentioned to me, because we, she and I talked about this the other day, they know the game. So it's they like they know the menu, they know the game, and they can answer questions about it. And so there's this kind of cool. That's I thought that's a business model right there. That's, that could be a winner. I these, mean, these I'm guys, saying. these guys working in these companies. I mean, they are multipliers. You know, this is not maybe not what you. Is like a multiplier direct. an influencer? Is that what that is? Yeah. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. Like, ready? Yeah. yeah. Things. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'd say that it, if in uh, when companies present their new products and you have something like that somewhere in town, I mean, you should invite these people to sure. show them your products. Absolutely. And so it's not only about the retailers, but if you have in that particular city where you present the things, with your products, and invite these people. And then other places, right beyond the bar. I mean, where else can we start? people getting to know about board games and how much fun they are. And I'm talking strategy games here. I'm not just talking party games. I'm talking, you know, let's take some of these amazing Euro games even and bring them back into the States. And how do we do that? And, and I love your dating idea. Did you, do you like my dating I ideas? Dating so idea. I do game nights for Match.com. And so one of the things that we've done is taken, taken it to the singles market. And so we run them in 80 markets across the country, and, and our, our response has been amazing. I mean, we get like average between 30 and 50 at every event, um, and that those are facilitated. Then we run happy hours where we put a product at every single table in the bar, and there's 150 to 200 people at each one, and they connect through board games. Why? Because it is the best people connector. I mean, you get to know somebody by their sense of humor, <clears throat> And guess what? You're not going to look that they're 20 pounds overweight. You're not going to look that they're balding. You're not going to care how much money you have. Not so much. You're going to think, this guy, he's kind of making me laugh, you know? So, uh, you know, there's a little connection there. It helps. 
But there's other places, right? I mean, yeah, well, you know, I think one interesting opportunity might be schools. I know, you know, my daughter's in first grade, and she'll come home from school and say, "Oh, we played games today, mommy, in the classroom." Like they're learning to play chess, and there's so many of the games out coming out these days are they are they're really strategic. They're very educational. Um, and you know, at, at LeapFrog, I, you know, I work with a lot of bloggers, and um, I recently did um, kind of house parties all over the country with, with not only with bloggers, but How did you like those, the house parties? Was oh, I love, those are so great. I got <laughs> lots and lots of millions of Because I've heard about those, but I don't know, I mean, are they yeah. really, can you, can you, and, and I know this is off topic, so yeah. just answer the question. Uh, was the was the return good for house party um, for you? In terms of awareness? Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's a great, I mean, these days, moms, when they're looking for, you know, the, the next greatest toy that they should buy for their kid for Christmas, I mean, they're not always watching TV. They're online, yeah. and they're they're searching keywords like best hot toys for Christmas. Bam! So if you structure a house party program to make sure that those types of keywords are built sure. in and, and you get really great reception from the bloggers, then I, I, think, I think they have very positive ROI. So I'm a big fan of house parties. But um, what I was going to say is that I, I recently did a house party program in schools. So I got 250 teacher bloggers to actually bring some product into the classroom. Got and it was so much fun for these kids. It got you know lots of pictures, so much buzz. So think about doing this with games. Well, I think you know why? Game they have teacher contingent online. <laughs> They're, they're hiding out there, but they're oh. there. Oh, and they're, they're, they're becoming so more and more vocal. Unbelievable. Yeah. And they love yeah. to share tips and advice because they don't get a lot of resources. Uh, they don't yeah. really, you know, they get like the common core standards, like these are the things your children, you know, need to be test worthy of. But they love talking to each other. They need kind of those those social touch points. So this, and, and they love getting free product. So I think, I think from a game strategy perspective, um, it, it would be something to look into. Yeah. yeah. You know, I really grapple between trying to figure out, I mean, I know that there's this way that business is done, and, and I've been in the toy industry a long time, and it's, there's a protocol. There's a way that you have to dance within the confines of how the whole thing works. It's a machine. And um, I get that, and we all need to make money, and we all, all need to try to make our products su successful. But I also feel that there's, there's another way to come at it, and I think that's what Debbie's doing, is to try to change the establishment, to try to change the way that the whole thing works so that it works different later and maybe it's going to take a generation i don't know but i think every toy is educational and i think we need to teach people to think so they can make anything educational anything fun or anything awesome you know you can take a cardboard box and make it into a rocket ship if you have an imagination and i think the thing that we fail to do sometimes as toy makers is we don't do a really good job at teaching kids how to think and imagine and use what they have to make what we give them so much better than what it is we gave them and uh, yeah, well, I think when you talk about bringing games to the people and the uh, where we are right now, we've got social media, and um, it's so easy now to take a photo or a video and share things that you've made, and it's so easy now to crowdsource ideas, crowdsource funding, crowdsource support. Um, so the the rules have really changed. So how do you crowdsource gameplay? That's a great question. You can just imagine. I mean, you you could put a game out there and uh, solicit ideas from the world. You could, you can put any you could put any video, you could put any website, anything up on the internet, and overnight you could have people from around the world playing a game. It's quirky, right? It's crowdsourced it's product development. Yeah. You can do that. Idea. Well, so I think we're done. Just. Anybody have anything to add? <laughs> well, then let's have some more coffee before we have to hit the show floor. <laughs> Yay! I want to make you a guys. quick oh, announcement sorry. about Women in Toys. I'm Ashley. I sit on the board. And I just wanted to make sure that everyone here was aware that Women in Toys is a volunteer organization. So all of these events, if you've been to our, our dinner in February or any of our breakfasts at the major trade shows, they're all put in by volunteers. So I encourage you all to get involved, find a local chapter, or start your own if Join you're Chicago. not in the area. Join Chicago. Join Chicago. Outside. Please, come on. This could be like, thank you, Whoopi. And, <laughs> and also, there are postcards up front. We have our biggest fundraiser of the year. It's our Wonder Woman Awards Dinner. 
So we usually have 300 plus people. It's February 17th, President's Day, um, around New York Toy Fair. It's a wonderful event. Nominate a woman, a colleague, get your friends to nominate you. It's, it's a fantastic evening, I wouldn't miss it. Thanks, Ash. Thanks, Ash. Thanks, you guys. chairs, we'll do whatever it takes. And the reality is, it's it's an organization that can help you so much. It's a tool that's right in front of you. And I, I started my own company five years ago, I came from a major toy company where, you know, I, I knew everyone within my organization, but I went out on my own and, and I knew nobody. And I joined this organization and suddenly I have hundreds of women that I can call my friends, that I can pick up the phone when I have a question, that are there to you and it's, it's the most powerful network and I, I really encourage you all, all to use it um, we also we have a Facebook page we have a Twitter page a LinkedIn group but what most people don't realize is that we're, we're actually a membership based organization so some people will be part of our LinkedIn group or join our Facebook page and they, and they don't really realize that there's more beyond that and there's so many things because we're a volunteer organization you know, we're really only as good as what our volunteers put in. So we want you know people to step up to the plate and say, I want to start a mentor mentee program, and I want to champion that. And you can or even anything. just anything. And so I feel you just brought up my favorite point um, because here's the deal. Like last night, and I mentioned this to a couple of my colleagues. You know, we were at the Tag Awards last night, and you look around the room, and it's all men. And I think to myself, I know so many brilliant women, and I, you know, I'm a girl, so I'm going to gravitate towards these chicks, and we're going to network and buy and stuff like that. But they're brilliant women who should be running every one of these flip the toy companies. And you look out there, and it's all men. It's like, and we all know that the, the toy industry is, is, you know, has always been sort of a man's world. It always started out that way. I mean, um, but, but it can't change. And I'm new to it. I just joined last, well, I didn't just join, but I just started, you know, helping out with the Chicago chair last year. But, and I think it's a change that we can all make. But the thing is, everybody's got to kind of want to do it. You got to want to be a part of it. You got to want to put the time in. You got to say, you know, I'm not saying you got to start your own program, but come to a meeting. Give me your ideas. Let me know what you have to say. Yeah, That's it. You know, we, we can yeah. use a lot of help on the website. Just something, start with something small. And the more involved you get, I promise, the more you, you the more you'll gain for it, from it. I chair, I co chair the Wonder Woman Dinner, I chair the Florida chapter. I've chaired events at most of the major trade shows, involved at the brand. It, it just get involved, and right. the more the more you do, the more you'll do. Be. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. All right. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Oh. Oh Can I say one thing? Sure. Um, I'm a guy wearing shoulders, but <laughs> that's, I didn't mind it. So it kind of cuts that play pattern mold of boy, girl, whatever. Um, I, have, I have two daughters. Uh, they're 10 and 13. Um, I game with them. And we're more of a video gaming family, so we game together, stay together, and things like that. GameStop is one of our favorites. Um, but where I'm going is uh, Amber and Jay, they're 10 and 13. Middle school and elementary school. Um, <clears throat> talking about play patterns as for princesses or, or the army soldier, whatever the case is. Uh, they both, they dance, so they're in, they're in that girly pattern. But they love TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. We mm. TBR it. You gotta record it every Friday you know, or, or Saturday. It's on Saturday morning. Like, well, we're out of Florida, the Florida chapter here. But uh, I'm just saying that is that that is merging together as for the play patterns, whatever else. It's gonna take time, right. as we were saying. And I mean, Zen, our product, Control Buddies, it's kind of a hybrid. We do PTA fundraising. We go into the schools, that type of thing, and we also do retail. So that's part of our um, business model. Um, but Troll Buddies also the product we developed. It kind of coincided with our girls. 
that uh, you know it's a boy girl you know it's, it, it crosses the lines you know you have many boys wearing shoulder buddies we had a uh, school fundraiser as a girl too so so you had to think about that whole thing when you were coming up with your well with our product plan, at the time right? I'm not promoting yeah. product, our shoulder buddies but I'm saying right, but right. as my my girls my, my wife's home now watching the kids now so it's it's warm in Florida she goes it's cold in Chicago <laughs> but uh, but where I'm going is you know that is not it's not stereotyping every single girl that is princess Barbie right. every single boy and you know it's, it's, it's you know whatever the ranger or power ranger or whatever makes it or uh you know max box yeah so okay. it is coming together and yeah so that's good I've, I've done research now for two years with hundreds of kids boys and girls and i totally agree um that's what i've seen and that's what gives me hope with what i'm trying to do with goldie blocks i feel like i can push it even harder than i have like that's the feedback I i'm getting so. yeah, i can push definitely. it even harder and every girl that i have played with over the last two years even if she's into dolls and princess stuff, every little girl that I meet, I find that she has so many other interests yeah. that aren't being reflected in the toy aisle. But Just as for the TMNT, my, team. my, my daughter, she has, she has friends that they'll watch it, they'll watch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's a flash, you know, it's a throwback from the 80s, you know, it's been rebranded on, on, on a Cartoon Network, but right. it's, it's a right. fun show. And actually, it's very funny. You know, it's, it's, it's four turtles. I mean, they're it's really so, you know, makes, it makes us laugh, sit there and laugh. <laughs> so, it's very, very funny show. But, uh, the funny thing, too, is with boys. I mean, I've seen boys love my product. You see, boys are obsessed with Rainbow Loom. Yeah, like, yes, there you go. They, they, know, don't, know. they don't need to be put in that same box. No, they don't. It's no, what no, we teach them. It's what we show them. It's what's cool. It's what we decide for them that they should have. Absolutely. It's up to us. I really believe that. I agree. I agree. So, thanks, ladies. This was fun.